people evolving toward enlightenment? No. No, no, no. And then what do you mean by it? Well, there's, there's fantasies running running around in the spiritual communities that, you know, humanity is evolving. Yes, sir. I have humanity is evolving, but not toward enlightenment. And there's also good, you know, arguments for humanity's devolving also. So, you know, <clears throat> humanity is simply going through stuff, and um, in the end, maybe some of it's better, maybe some of it's not. You know. But there are so many, you see, like, just take a look at civilizations from the time of beginning, from the beginning times, okay, you know, Mesopotamia, you know, whatever, Africa, Japan, China. Yeah, see, and then take a look at how, you know, what's happened. You can see trends and, and whatnot. You know, and the way people behave with each other. And so we look back at some, some times, you know, and we go, oh, this is appalling. People treated each other horribly, horribly. You know, and the principles, the social structures were not, were terrible, perhaps, you know, in our view, because we're such gentle people now. So, and they, they treated each other horribly. I mean, as a social structure. And then you also find times when they treated each other much better than we do. You know? I mean, go back to the Greeks and see some of that stuff. Maybe some of the Romans as the citizens. You know, they didn't treat their slaves well. They had slaves. See, but, you see what I'm saying? So it was up and down, up and down. When it comes to those kind of social niceties or whatever. And then, you know, honor and power and you know, how they do it, once again, up and down, degrade, etc. You know, and you take just like the, the Romans, you see, and the, my, uh, you know, view on, from, from my research, maybe it certainly weren't the only ones, but how much they invented that we take for granted as modern, you know, huge amount. Huge amounts, you see? And we think, well, you know, yeah, but they're a couple thousand years old. They must have been bar barbarians back then. Uh, obviously not, because they invented so, I mean, I mean or, or maybe they were socially, I don't know. See? But they, invent <clears throat> they invented so much of the, the objective world, the civilized world that we'd lived within, and it was incredibly powerful for them. And it wasn't just their physical inventions like roads and glass and cement and central heating, et cetera, but their conceptual inventions like how to fight, how to organize, how you know strategically get people to do so. And build bridges. I mean, it's incredible. Anyway, it's, it's just on and on. It goes just in how much, you know, when you, when you notice. And then... See, is it evolving from there? No, it degrades into the Dark Ages. See? And then even Rome itself degraded with the emperors. They just went nuts. You know, and then they got syphilis, they fell apart, they started warring with each other, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, and the Visigoths and the Huns and everything like that destroyed them, took them over. And then what did they offer? The Dark Ages. <laughs> That's like, whoopee! <laughs> Up, up and onward, you know. And see, and they had the Romans and all their learning and all their understanding like that. They had, it was all there and available. What'd they do with it? Lost it. They lost it. You see, why? Because well, they're too busy sacking and pillaging and plundering and conquering and doing the whatever they did. You know. See? Foundation time, see? And I just lost all that. And so it goes, plummets more and more in the Dark Ages, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, that goes through all sorts of changes and eventually ends up at the Renaissance and people start thinking again. Ah! People start being civilized and they appreciate philosophies and arts and science and stuff like that, little by little, you know, see? And then, oh, and they, oh, this is so much better. Man, that other way sucked, you know? And burning witches, it just wasn't my thing. <laughs> 
you know, or whatever, right? You know, and then it goes up and down, up and down. See, now, as far as enlightenment goes, why would anybody think we're evolving toward enlightenment? I mean, people uh, were getting enlightened thousands of years ago. And according to the legends, more so than most people now, okay? Anyway, Gautama and some of his guys. You know, see, well, how, we, how have we evolved in that way? No, no, I don't think we've evolved at all. I think, uh, basically, we're just full of it. <laughs> we're narcissistic. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, oh yes, we're you know, oh we're the new spiritual da 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 da. You know, yes, we're evolving into this great. You know, you, nah, not even close. People fool themselves, and it's fine. I don't mind. You know, fool yourself away. I don't care. You know. You, you invent nicer ways of being, cool. A nice community, fine. I just suggest people don't lie about it, and they always do. Like I said, the, um, you know, in the old days, the old school, I'd talk about the Shangri-La thing. See? Oh, you want to create Shangri-La? You want to create this wonderful environment of enlightenment and love and you know, peace and harmony and growth and consciousness. Sounds good, right? I'm all for it. It would fail. Said, so, you know, hey, we could get a place up in the mountains, get it all together and everybody gather around and agree on this. That would be hard right there though, huh? <laughs> Getting a bunch of people to agree on that. You know, the ground rules for the community, but you know, you could do it. And then, um, you know, I'd say, I, say, I said at the time, I wouldn't give it a year. I think inside of a year, it would degrade. You'd fall apart. And say, why? Well, because you'd be there. You see? see? And it has to happen because, <coughs> you know, what do you want from Shangri-La? You want from Shangri-La a great environment that'll do it for you, right? You go into Shangri-La, you're the barbarian, right? <laughs> you're the unenlightened one, see? But they're all enlightened and loving and they teach you and take you under there and, you, and you're going to be wonderful because they're all wonderful. Yeah, until you finally get irritated and smack the monk or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, like, you know, it's like, oh no, God damn it, I don't want to be like this or I want that, you know, whatever it is, you see? And if you see, like, see, like, just look at the billions and billions of people on the planet. Does it look like they're becoming more enlightened? Doesn't seem. I don't see any evidence. I don't see any reason why that would occur. And even if it w did occur, I mean, even if something was occurring, kind of worldwide, where everybody got into, well, we got to get enlightened. We got to contemplate. Well, that would probably increased the amount of people that would have enlightenment experiences because you know everybody was trying to do that. See? But I wouldn't call it an evolution. It would just be a, a development in civilization. And it's an unlikely in development. <laughs> people aren't generally interested in that. You know, the vast majority of people are interested in the, the basics. You know, success, money, sex, you know, these things. They're not interested in enlightenment. Unless they think enlightenment is going to do something for them. Hi, I'm Brendan Lee, and I've been studying with Peter Rawlson for 20 years. I really want you to know that no matter how many videos you watch or books you read, it pales in comparison to the power of the live workshops that we host here at the Center or on Zoom. If you want to get serious and do work that makes a real difference, please check the links in the description to learn more. Thank you.